Good morning, everyone. I'm Tommy Thompson. This is AI in Games, and we're in Malta. I'm already covered up from the sun, because it's been pretty warm over here. And so, yeah, just to fill you in, we're on our way to day one of the AI in Games Summer School. Bearing in mind, uh, it has, I don't own it. It uh, just happens to share an interest in AI and games. So, no, it is not the officially, well, it is actually kind of somewhat the AI and games endorsed summer school, given that I do help participate and do a bunch of stuff here. So, you might recall I made a video last year where I attended the summer school in Cambridge, in the UK, and I hosted a panel and I was just a bit of a professional nuisance because I was asked to be. This year, we are in sunny Malta, which, for those of you who are not familiar, Malta is a, an island, a small island country that is in the South Mediterranean. It kind of borders between Europe and Africa, and uh, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this is actually my first time here. Um, gorgeous place to be. It is very hot. I was going to say, look, the weather was pretty nice when we were in Cambridge, but this is this is a whole other kettle of fish. So. I am now getting ready to head out over to the venue where the summer school takes place. The summer school takes place in the city of Valletta, which is sort of a, the, one of the older, more historic towns here uh, in Malta. And critically, it's over there, um, on the other side of the water. I am currently based in the slightly more, you know, kind of touristy, kind of more um, fun, energetic, modern area of Slima. So I've got to get over there get myself a ticket and uh, make my way across the water over to Valletta because things will be kicking off at the summer school in around uh, about an hour's time. So yeah, right, let me go and sort this out and uh, let's do it. Okay, as I make my way to Valletta, let's take a moment to give a shout out to Scenario who've kindly sponsored this episode of AI and Games Plus. Scenario is the first gen AI toolkit for the games industry and offers the most complete suite of features offering creative precision to game studios and indie developers. Scenario's training capabilities facilitates the creation of AI models by anyone from anywhere and at any time to easily incorporate style consistent assets in current game production workflows for ideation, conception, production and marketing. Private by default with full data traceability, Scenario is available as a web app or API that can directly be integrated within popular engines such as Unity and Unreal or directly in-game. Backed by Play Ventures, Decasonic, Anorak Ventures, Oculus, Riot Games, Blizzard, and more. To find out more, go to Scenario.com. Okay, let's dig into the summer school. So the event is hosted by Professor Yergos Yanakakis of the University of Malta and Professor Julian Tegeles from New York University, with Dr. Antonius Leapis and Dr. David Melhart, both from the University of Malta, also part of the organizing team. Plus, in 2024, the event is sponsored both by Model AI and Keyword Studios, with Keyword's head of AI, Stephen Peacock, acting as their representative. The summer school originated from the textbook that the team originally wrote and published back in 2018, with an updated second edition on the way, which aimed to give a high-level overview of the variety of approaches that have emerged from academia in AI for games. Full disclosure, Yergos and Julian are old friends of mine, who I have known since I joined the Game AI research community while in grad school starting in 2006. So I attend as an invited speaker, a panel moderator, and an all-round professional nuisance. Greetings, everyone. It's day two of the summer school, and we are... I'm currently wandering through the streets of Valletta, which is more of the kind of historic old town area um, in this region of the island. And uh, this is actually a, was a former fort and uh, was occupied. Well, the, it, like I said before, this is a British territory or was a British territory. So you can see an awful lot of impact that we sadly had on both the, the kind of naval fortification, but also just other parts of their culture like You know, that's wild. I don't think I've actually seen a, 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 a an old-fashioned phone box like that um, back in the UK for years. There you go. But we're on day two. <clears throat> we're still in the, the kind of what is often considered the more academic or scholarly part of the summer school. So the first two days are mostly researchy based. The third day is industry focused. And then day four and five is the game jam. And so the first couple of days, it's predominantly Yanakakis and Degelius talking, 
And critically, the material doesn't change all that drastically from one year to the next. Critically, the, re the big reason for that is that the idea is that people will seldom revisit the summer school. The idea is that people come along one time and they'll get what they want out of it, they'll get their value out of it. And so that first time you go in, a lot of it is really summarizing the key points of the artificial intelligence in games book that Tegelius and Yanakakis wrote. Oh no, getting in the way of the local traffic. Uh, there we go. So, <clears throat> yeah, like they, they're, they're often summarizing key parts of the book in the first two days. And then they'll have a couple of additional authors um, and speakers come in and talk about relevant things and kind of things that are adjacent to what they were talking about there. So yesterday we had um, Ahmed Khalifa, who's one of the AI Summit advisors, alongside myself, uh, giving an overview of like different approaches for procedural content generation, what we call constructivist, constructivist approaches that are typically used by indie devs. And it was a really nice overview. And then we had uh, David Melhart, who's also one of the co-organizers of the summer school, talking a little bit about how to invoke the human element a little bit more into the work that's being done, I'm about to be killed. There we go. So, we've got a little bit more of that today. There is a little bit more industry-ish stuff creeping into this day though, in the afternoon. Um, we have uh, Yu Chen's son, who was actually a student at the event last year, also was a panelist on my talk at the London Developer Conference, coming in to talk about the work they're doing with their game A Thousand and One Nights, which, it's sort of a mishmash of trying to find ways to employ generative AI in indie games in ways that is um, <clears throat> creatively interesting. And there's also going to be a presentation from the folk at Leonardo AI, who are a company that specialise in I think, text, gen well, no, sorry, <clears throat> text to image based pipelines using generative tools. But for the most part, it's going to be more of the kind of scholarly work really focusing on what was in the book. And then day three is when it's all industry. And that's where I get to, that's when I've got to do some work. Critically, I have two things to do. I'm hosting a panel again, like I did last year. But the other thing is they asked me, could you do the introduction to the industry day by giving a one hour overview of the history of AI in video games? No pressure. Huh? Ooh. So moving into the industry presentations, we had some really great talks. You can check out my longer write-up over on the AI and Games website, but there were some notable highlights. David Rinaudi, a lead data scientist at Massive Entertainment, talked about their work at the studio, critically how they use AI to train models that are reflective of expected performance of the current in-game state on specific hardware profiles, such as the Xbox Series S and X and the PlayStation 5. This is actually a huge benefit to end users, the actual game developers, who work with the tool as they're building specific games and are able to immediately see an engine, a rough estimate of the potential GPU costs of the current game state on different platforms without having to deploy the build to the dedicated hardware. Speaking from experience, that sounds crazy and like really exciting to me. We had Melanie lopez Malay of Ubisoft also, who came to talk about their experiences in applying natural language processing to video game productions. And crucially, nowadays NLP is largely dominated by generative AI and LLMs, but this hasn't made applying this knowledge in game development any easier. Malay was actually one of the team behind Ubisoft's Neo project, which I talked about earlier this year, given I was invited by the team to try it out at GDC. Perhaps the most fun part of this presentation was the focus on asking why AI should be used. And provided we can come up with smart, sensible and empathetic perspectives on why, then we can start to explore how. How should it be used in ways that make sense for developers and their goals? This is highly relevant given the current situation we exist within, as generative AI is often applied in situations that are unsafe, impractical, unethical and immoral. Undoubtedly one of my favourite presentations of the week. The last talk I want to give a shout out to was Anna Winterstein, who is a game designer at Lively, a keyword studio, who presented their perspective on working on Project Ava. You may recall a video I did a while ago which was a summary of Ava, a game that was developed as an R&D project internally within Keywords, where the goal was to try and build as much as possible using just generative AI tools. 
One thing Anna brought to this conversation was the value that was found in using GPT as a design tool. Rather than having it be precise, be intricate and provide detailed information, but use it as a mechanism to generate lots of ideas and then pick, choose and refine them, and later use the Azure API to plug in pre-prompt information and examples to ease the process of providing relevant information to the language model. Critically, I enjoyed the closing comments explaining what game designers actually need from AI tools rather than what has been presented by a lot of companies, and it largely fell under four key aspects. For generative AI to be trustworthy and accurate, to be consistent in understanding and delivering information, plus consistent prompting methods, diverse corpora so that it's less cliche laden, and finally ethical considerations such that it's transparent, accountable, and developed with clearly defined fields of application. Also, my own talk? Yeah, I think it went well. I plan to release it in some format down the line whenever I get the chance to record it. It's uh, or Thursday afternoon. Almost well, I'm going to fly back to the UK momentarily, but the game jam is afoot. Uh, they're spread up over multiple sites across where we are. We're at the University of Malta's Valletta campus. Um, but I think there's a bunch of folk that are off site, but there's two rooms where people are set up to jam today. I'm going to miss what happens at the end of this jam and the games that come out of it. So hopefully we can keep an eye on the socials and uh, see it there. Ooh, right, apologies for the light flicker. Fluorescent bulbs. Let's go in and have a look now that they're up and running. The summer school was, once again, a fantastic event to attend. It's always great to meet new people joining the Game AI community, and also to connect with people across the industry who I've not had a chance to engage with before, or simply not seen in a long time. Thanks once again to the summer school team for inviting me over to Malta. Best of luck to all the Game Jam folk. I hope it went really well. I actually haven't seen the final games that came out of it. I need to go and check all this out at some point. Be sure to check out the full write-up over on the AI and Games newsletter on my website at AIandGames.com where I've gave a lot more detail on each of the talks and the event as a whole. And of course, visit the summer school itself at school.gameaibook.org to find out more about it. Alright, that's it from me. I'm going to go cool off. I actually have more vlogs to go and edit. So yeah, I'm going to get on with that. Stay safe, take care, and I'll be back. <laughs>